Good morning, church, and happy Mother's Day. Mothers, we're especially grateful um, that you would choose to spend your time and your one set aside precious day with us here in worship at Christ GMC. This morning, Jerry's gonna be teaching um, about patience. And we all know that potentially the one person who has shown us the most patience throughout our lives is potentially our mothers. And that love and patience comes directly from the life of Jesus. And so as we all try and follow him better and know him more, um, let's worship and sing together this morning. There's a grace when the heart is on fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. When I look at the space between.
Jesus, we just come to you this morning. We ask that you fill this place, wherever we may be. God, we surrender our burdens to you. We ask that you take them. We lay them down at your feet, God. I just ask that in these next few moments, you use Jerry, and he's a vessel for you, God. I pray that we just get to know your heart and your character more this morning, God. In your son's name I pray, amen. So I'll start out by saying that I am an identical twin. So uh, I imagine that a large part of my childhood was an exercise in patience for my mom to begin with. One in particular funny memory uh, is when uh, my sister and I were toddlers and my mom had uh, gotten a new tube of lipstick. One day she uh, couldn't find my sister and I, didn't hear us, didn't know where we were. She went looking for us and found us in her bathroom, we had found her tube of lipstick, her, her new tube of lipstick, stripped off all of our clothes and drawn, we had drawn all over ourselves uh, with her new lipstick. Apparently when she walked in and found us, um, she just started laughing and didn't even get upset didn't get mad, just chose to make it a funny memory. She's also kind of my sister and I's saving grace when we are kind of at the end of our rope with, with our kiddos. Um, she knows just when to step in and kind of provide the, the patience that, um, that we have maybe run out of. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you so much. When, uh, when reflecting on our mom and her patience, the, the first thing that comes to mind for both of us is that uh, she's been married to my dad for 58 years. The end? We're just kidding. Uh, but we, we really did talk about the stories that we had about mom. And it was funny because we thought about both of them, you know, how that was going to be. And it ended up being that we both felt like my mom listened to all of our stories as kids. And, and she still listens to all of our stories and always listened with patience and made us feel important. And looking back on some of those stories, I don't know how she did it because I'm pretty sure they weren't important at all, but she made our world seem important in the stories that we had to tell. Right, and you know, I, I hesitate to say this because my boys will, will certainly watch this video, uh, but, but there are times that they're speaking to me um, that I'm like, oh, we just need to get to the end of the story. Like, or I know the end of the story and I, I just want to get there. And so I, I feel like I always have my mom there that listened to me forever. And hopefully I can do the same thing for my kids. Yeah, we can pass on that legacy. Uh, and I hope that I have too pass on the legacy of listening to our kids because sometimes that's kind of a lost art anymore, just sitting down and listening. And in their world and in our world, when it was our turn, it's so important. And then she made us feel um, so loved by just sitting and listening patiently to stories that rambled on, I'm certain of it. <laughs> right, she's just a great example uh, of that patience and listening and, and making us feel loved. Patience, I don't have a story, I do have a definition. My mom loving me as a teenage boy. Yeah, it takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of patience. More than I have. Howdy, church family. My name is Jay Woodward, and I appreciate the opportunity that Pastor Daniel and Pastor Jerry have given me to talk about the patience of my mom, Cynthia Woodward. And, you know, we talk about patience being a virtue. In the Bible, we use Job as an example of, of a pillar of patience. In fact, we describe people of having the patience of Job. And a lot of moms out there would probably say, it's not just the patience of Job, but patience in and of itself is a job. 
It's a full-time commitment keeping up with the demands of a household. And my household was no different. Growing up in Houston, Texas, the oldest of three boys, I found myself involved in a lot of different varying interests that my mom had the patience to support and want to grow and nurture my interest in a variety of fields. But you know, one of the things that I'm gonna to preview today is that we're actually sitting in a hallway of things that I am notoriously known for quitting. Uh, first up, I wanted to explore music and I had experiences in piano, but they didn't last too long. Uh, from there, my love of music might have morphed into the expression of music. Not playing music, but maybe perhaps expressing myself through dance. I grew up in the 1980s when someone known as the King of Pop came on the scene. So I begged my mom to take me down to the local YMCA and sign up for break dancing lessons, but didn't last too long there. So I moved from that type of movement to maybe sports. Uh, I decided that I was going to be the next tennis star, the John McEnroe, Jimmy Connor of the day. So I signed up for tennis lessons, but I found out that I didn't wait for it, love it that much. So tennis went by the wayside, and then if it wasn't going to be tennis, it be a different type of participation, and I decided I was going to be the next Taekwondo, martial arts artist, Jean-Claude Van Damme, and all the action movies that came out in the late 80s, but I didn't stick with that either. And then uh, Boy Scouts, a couple of merit badges before the sash and all the sewing was rendered obsolete. The point is, even though I started and ultimately didn't finish all these things, my mom had patience with me. Patience in helping me find things that I might enjoy, driving me around the expense, the cost of all those activities, but never unwavering in her support for me to try to find something that I can truly plug into, find a way to really reach my full potential in a field that I love, and she, that's what moms do. Moms are always there, unconditionally supporting, unwavering in their dedication to, to helping their children achieve their dreams and unlock their potential, and I'm happy to say that through my mom's support, I was able to find my niche through music. Not vocal music or break dancing, but saxophone. And was able to go on and have a, a very successful career both in high school and in college uh, playing that instrument. And I just want to tell all the mothers out there today, for all the sacrifices that you make of your time, your, your driving, and your money, it's appreciated. And even though it seems like we don't always have a firm idea as kids of what we want to do, it's because of mothers like my mom, Cynthia, and other mothers out there that show their support to their kids that we're able to truly find things that we love and enjoy. I am really glad we're able to be together today. Uh, the scripture passage I want to read from is, uh, is from the 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'm going to read uh, verses 1 through 7. I just want to invite you to hear these words. They may be very familiar words to you. Uh, it, it may have been a long time since you've heard these words. So I just want to invite you to, to hear what it is that Paul said to the church in Corinth about love. He said this. He said, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but if I don't have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but if I don't have love, I'm nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship so that I may boast, but if I don't have love, I gain nothing. And then he describes love this way. He said, love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't envy, it doesn't boast, it's not proud, it doesn't dishonor others, it's not self-seeking, it's not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love doesn't delight in evil, but it rejoices in the truth. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it always perseveres. Love never fails. Will you pray with me? God, I thank you for this time that you've given us to be together this morning. And, and I just ask your blessing over this time that we have together. I pray, God, that, that if there are any thoughts, uh, any barriers that might keep any of us, Lord, from hearing what it is that you have to say to us today, I just pray that you would, through the work of your Spirit, allow those things to be just set aside so that we can hear you and hear you clearly. God, I thank you for our mothers. I thank you for the way that you love 
And I thank you for the way that you serve, and I thank you for the way that you care through them. So I lift them up today. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Earlier this week, I had a, a well check, and I, I, uh, this is what I do once a year. And so I went, and, and the nurse met me there, and the and, uh, first thing she did was take me in a little room and and have me stand on a scale. I hate that part. And I know every scale that I've ever stood on in a doctor's office seems always to be wrong. And it felt the same way this time. And so I stood, I thought, how could it be that heavy? And, and so, so uh, she, I, I sat down and she's writing the, the information down on, a, on, a, on my, my file. And I'm thinking, I, I got to do everything I can to get her mind off of that because I know what she's probably thinking. She said, how could he weigh that much? And, and, uh, and so I, I started engaging her in conversation and asked her uh, about her family. And, and then I asked a question that I ask a lot of people these days. I said, so uh, has anybody close to you been touched by the coronavirus? And, and she put down her pen and she looked at me and she said, yeah my 33-year-old daughter. And all of a sudden, it got real in that room. She said, you know, it's easy when you, you watch the news and, and you hear uh, all the things that people say. It's easy to just sort of set it all aside. But when it hits somebody close to you, somebody in your family, and, and then when it's your daughter... And then she started to cry. She said, it's been tough. It hit her really hard. But then she said she's, she's starting to get better slowly. She's getting better. Day by day, she's getting better. But it sure was hard. I tell you, the heart of a mom for her kids, that there's, there's nothing like it. And so today... On this Mother's Day, I, I want to spend our time together honoring the mothers that are, uh, are in our lives. I mean, they, they deserve it, especially after we've gone through all that we've gone through over the past couple of months. I mean, I mean think about it. Those homes where there are children um, who are school age, I mean, those homes have become school classrooms for those kids who should be in school. And, and if they're college age kids living at home now, those homes have become college dorm rooms. And uh, I mean, everything is different during this past season. I mean, I don't know what it's been like in your house, but in mine, I mean, we run the dishwasher pretty much every day and we, we take the garbage out at least once a day. I mean, we've eaten more meals during a week's period of time at our house than we would normally eat over a, a month's period of time under normal circumstances. It's been, it's just been different over these last two months. And so moms, I want to tell you, you deserve today. You deserve to be made special today. I tell you, one of my favorite 20th century authors is, is a, a lady named Irma Bombeck. And, and I tell you, she really has an incredible way with words. And, and she once wrote something about, about mothers that, that has always struck me. It's, it's entitled, When God Created Mothers. And this is, this is what she writes. She said, when the good Lord was creating mothers, he was well into his sixth day of overtime. And an angel appeared to him and said, you sure are fiddling around with this model. And God said, have you read the specs on this order? I mean, she has to be completely washable, but not plastic. And, and she has to have 180 moving parts, all replaceable. She has to run on black coffee and leftovers. She has to have a lap that disappears when she stands up. And she has to have a kiss that can cure anything from a broken leg to a disappointed love affair. And then she has to have six pairs of hands. The angel shook her head and she said, Six pairs of hands? No way. And God said, well, it's, it's the six pairs of hands. That's really not all that difficult. It's the three sets of eyes that are causing me so much trouble. And the angel said, I mean, is that on the standard model? And God nodded and said, yeah, she has to have one that, that's able to, one set of eyes that's able to see through a closed door and say, kids, what are you doing in that room when she already knows what's going on. Then she has to have another set of eyes in the back of her head so that she can see what she shouldn't see, but still see what she needs to see. 
And then she has to have, of course, eyes here in the front that, that can, can look at a child when it goofs up and say, I understand and I love you without so much as saying a word. God, this angel said, touching the, the, his sleeve, God, you need to get some rest tomorrow. And God said, I can't, I can't. I am so close to creating something that's, that's so much like me. I already have one who can heal herself when she's sick. I have one who can feed a family of six on one pound of hamburger meat. And I have another mom that can get a nine-year-old boy to stand under a shower. And then the angel circled this model that, that he was working on. And she said, it's too soft. Oh, but tough, God said excitedly. I mean, you can't imagine what this mom can do and endure. Well, can it think? Not only can it think, God said, but it can reason and it can compromise. So finally, the angel bent over and, and rubbed her finger along, along its cheek. And she said, uh, there's a leak. I told you, you've been trying to put too much into this model. And God looked at the angel and said, it's not a leak, it's a tear. What's it for? The angel said, well, it's for joy, it's for sadness, it's for disappointment, loneliness, and pride. And, and the angel said, God, you're a genius for doing that. And then somberly, God looked at the angel and said, I didn't put that tear there. It just came up naturally. I can't think of a more poignant picture of what a mother is than that. I mean, think right now about your mom. Think about what she endured during the course of your childhood. Think about the sacrifices that she made on your behalf. Think about all those times when, when she was knee-deep in some project and then you called and she just dropped everything so that she could go and be where you are. I think about what life has been like for moms over these past several weeks. I mean, I tell you, homes with kids in them under normal circumstances have more than a little chaos. But then you look outside and the flower beds may not have a single weed in them. The lawn may be meticulously mowed, the trees all trimmed, and on the front door of the house, there's a wreath that says, welcome friends. But if you were to look on the other side of that door, it's what's on the other side of that door that has really motivated me as I've thought about this message all this week. You know, I've thought about my mom uh, when I was growing up. I, 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 I threw more than my share of fits when I was a little kid. Um, when she'd take me to the store, for instance, my mother still loves to remind me of the time when I was three years old, and she took me to the grocery store, and I screamed the whole time she was there. I mean, I screamed so much, it just unnerved her, so much so that we got to the checkout stand, and, and, uh, and they, they got everything in the bag, and she wrote the check, handed the check to him, we left, and we got home and we had just walked in the door and the phone rang and it was the grocery store and my mom had forgotten to sign the check. It was my fault, she tells me, even today. <laughs> and then uh, I wasn't always the best big brother to my two younger sisters, especially my middle sister, Laura. My parents will often remind me that... Uh, that I loved to pick on Laura when we were growing up. I mean, I would just make life not very good for her. But time has gone by, and, and oh, I thank God for the healing that, that time brings and that growing up brings. But I'll tell you, over the course of my life, my mom has been a, a referee. She's been a, a counselor. She's been a teacher. She's been a cheerleader. She's been a, a calming influence in a home that at times can be a little chaotic. And during those occasions when, I've, when I was growing up, when my dad and I would get a little, little rowdy, get a little out of line in a good sort of way, uh, she would always rein us in. And so let me ask you, um, how is it with your mom? I tell you, if there's, if there's one thing I've noticed that, uh, that is required of a mother almost more than anything else, 
it's patience. And that need for patience begins long before a baby ever breathes the first breath. I mean, the pregnancy lasts nine months. And, and, and the closer you get to the due date, I tell you, the more patience that's required. Patience. Let me ask you, how, how did your mom demonstrate patience with you? I heard a story about a, a mom who was pushing her shopping cart through Walmart and, and her, her little daughter was sitting in the shopping cart just screaming bloody murder the whole time the mom was in Walmart and, and the mom would be going through the aisles and you could hear this child all over the store and, and, and the mom could, could be heard saying, uh, it's okay, Emma, it's going to be all right, Emma, it, just a little bit longer, Emma. It's almost time for us to leave, Emma. And, and on and on, the mom would say these kinds of statements until finally one of the Walmart uh, clerks walked up to the, to the mom and she said, you know, I got to commend you on how patient you are with little Emma in the cart. And the woman looked at the, the Walmart clerk and she said, um, ma'am, I'm Emma. Patience. Patience. Tell you, when Paul wrote about love in 1 Corinthians 13, that passage I wrote for you a little while ago, I mean, I read for you a little while ago, when, uh, when he began to describe what love looks like in the middle part of that chapter, the very first word he used to describe love was the word patient. He said, love is patient. It's, it's not a very common word these days. Because let's, let's face it, I mean, we live in a microwave world. We live in a fast pace where we, 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 we love fast food. And, and, and when fast food wasn't fast enough, we invented the drive through lane. And, and when the drive through lane wasn't fast enough, we invented the double drive through lane. And, and, and how about the internet? Can any of you remember that, that that's the sound of a dial-up modem? Sounded kind of like this. Sound familiar? You know, I, I heard somebody say that, that if, if it takes longer than two and a half seconds for us to upload a, a page on the internet, we'll walk away. I tell you, patience is, is, is hard to come by these days. You go to, go to Disney World and, and they have fast passes. You go to Fiesta, Texas, and they have a, a flash pass. I mean, the truth of the matter is we want it now. And if we can't have it now, we don't want it at all. We want instant results. We want instant gratification. I mean, you, you send a text or an email and, and you expect that if somebody cares about you, then they're going to respond to you pretty quickly. You post something on, on your social media page and, and you al almost immediately start looking for comments or, or likes to what you've posted so that you can make sure that people are really paying attention to you. I'm going to tell you, the pace of this world is an almost Constant conflict with patience. <laughs> Max Lucado says that, that we are the only country in the world that has a mountain named Rushmore. Patience. I'll tell you, there's, there's two things I've learned about people who are patient. The first thing I've learned about people who are patient is that, 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 that whether it's with their kids or whether it's with friends or whether it's even with complete strangers, people who tend to be patient with other people, well, they tend to love unconditionally. They, they, they love another person, not because of something that other person has done or, or not done, not because of who that person is. No, no the, the, the patient person recognizes that all of us make mistakes, that, that none of us are perfect, we're just human. I mean, the patient person has chosen to love with a love that, that, that just doesn't take offense, but always sees the potential in another person and doesn't demand immediate growth or immediate maturity, but, but just it, it's, it's a love that always looks for the best in other people, even, even when, when abuse comes the way of the one that's given the love. I tell you, it looks a lot like God, doesn't it? Psalm 103 says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we're formed, and he remembers how we're dust. 
Peter said in, in 2 Peter 3, 9, he said, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some people define slowness, but he's patient with you. He's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but wanting everyone to come to repentance. It's a beautiful kind of love, isn't it? So as I think about people who, who are patient, the first thing I notice about people who are patient is that they, they love unconditionally. And the second thing I've noticed about people who, who really demonstrate patience is that they accept the fact that they are not in control. I heard a story about some elderly women who were a part of a church, and they were asked um, to, to describe what it was that they thought led to their longevity. And, and Mabel who happened to be a, a very wealthy lady, um, she was asked, uh, uh, Mabel, uh, why is it do you think God has allowed you to live 92 years? And, and Mabel, without even hesitation, she says, well, I think God's allowed me to live 92 years so that, that the, the people who, who, uh, who are going to inherit what I leave behind will learn how to be patient. <laughs> Patience. And, and, and have you heard that, that commentary on the human condition? It says that, that a, a man can wait three and a half hours for a fish to bite a hook, but he can't wait 15 minutes for his wife to get dressed. I tell you, people who are patient, they recognize that, that they're not in control, but God is. David wrote in Psalm 27 these words. He said, teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a straight path. I'm still confident of this that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, which means I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord. I believe I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in this life. It's not going to happen only in the life that is to come. I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So wait for the Lord, he says. Wait for the Lord and be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. You see, the focus in those words that David wrote there is on the Lord. It's, it's on the Lord who's always at work and doing so many more things than we would ever be able to imagine or see or even recognize. I mean, I'll tell you, I, I think the greater our ability to recognize that it's God who's in control and not us, the easier it is for us to be patient. I'll tell you, I, I have to tell Jana from, from time to time that, that I'm a work in progress, I'm certainly not near where it is that God desires me to be, but I'm certainly headed that direction. I am a work in progress, I have to tell her. And, and, and I'll tell you, the same is true for your kids. They are a work in progress. And if you'll recognize that, if you'll recognize that your kids are a work in progress and trust that God is always at work in their lives, and I'm gonna tell you, patience will come more easily for you. And you will then recognize that your task for your kids is to remind them of what God is doing in their lives and encourage them to stay connected to this God who is constantly working to create this masterpiece that he intended for your children to look like. We gotta remember that God is at work in our lives always. I hope you'll let that be a patience builder for you. Corey Ten Boom once said, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Psalm 46.1 says that God is our refuge and strength. He's an ever-present help in time of trouble. God is an ever-present help. Do you get that? I mean, there is never a moment in your life when God is absent. Never. Which means that no matter what you're going through, no matter what your kids are going through, no matter what your grandkids are going through right now, God is there in the midst of it. He's working. He's moving. He is an ever-present help. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Paul did. It's what enabled him to say in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, don't be anxious about anything. Don't be impatient about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind 
in Christ Jesus. What that says to me is that those who are patient, those people who are able to be patient with other people, they're not anxious in the midst of uncertainty. And the reason for that is because they recognize that they're not in control. And so they make their requests to the one who is in control. Their prayers are not, God, you are taking so long. When are you ever going to answer my prayers? No. Instead, their prayers are, God, I know you see clearly what I see imperfectly. So God, I ask you to help me in my waiting. God, I believe, but I just need you right now to help me in my unbelief. And do you know how God responds to that? He responds to that prayer by saying, Do not fear, for I am with you. Don't be dismayed, for I'm your God. And I'll strengthen you, and I'll help you, and I will uphold you by my righteous right hand. Now here's the thing. If you have never trusted in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, none of this is ever going to make sense. It's just not. Because outside of a relationship with Jesus, you are always just going to be pushing through life. You're always going to be pressing forward on your own. You're always going to be trying to bull your way through things. And and, and, and I'm going to tell you, you, if, if that is you, then you are going to struggle with being patient until you die. Because for you, The only one you can really trust, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, the only one you can really trust is you. Because that's all there is, just you and everybody else. So what I've come to realize in the course of, of my life is that those people who are patient, they believe that in the final analysis that God is going to find a way to, to lead them through the wilderness of their lives. And in the end, God will move in their lives in such a way that he will bring order to the chaos. And, and so they don't get hung up on thinking, if it's going to be, it's up to me. No, instead, instead they say, God, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Now, there's one more thing I want to say about about patience, and that is that it takes great courage to be patient. It really does. I mean, I've known moms over the course of my life who are some of the most courageous people on the planet. I mean, they will literally walk through fire if that's what it takes to care for their kids. And so on this Mother's Day, on this Mother's Day, I hope you'll thank your mom for being so courageous. I hope you'll thank your mom for trusting in God and not in herself. I hope you'll thank your mom for being patient, patient with you and patient with all that's surrounded you during your growing up years. And lastly, lastly, I hope you'll thank your mom for all the ways that she poured herself into you to make you who you are today. You see, the more I've thought about this, the more I've come to realize that that moms, whether they know it or not, or whether they intend to or not, they replicate themselves in their kids. They really do. I mean, think about it. How many times during the course of your life uh, have you uh, have you you look back on some things that happened in your childhood and, or in your growing up years, and you've uh, things that you heard or saw from your parents, and you've you've probably said, "I'm never going to say that as an adult. I'm never going to do that as an adult." And then I don't know, life happens, and before you know it, boom, you've said it or you've done it. Has that ever happened to you? I mean, I know it's happened to me. My uh, my dad preached a sermon while I was in college. It was on Mother's Day, and I'd come home from college. Janet and I were engaged, and we went to church that morning. And and uh, and my dad, in, in preaching the sermon, um, during the sermon, he said something like, um, "If you want to know what your wife is going to look like one day, just look at her mother." 
Now, I have, I have no idea what the context was for that statement. I don't know where that sermon went that day. I, I, I quite frankly don't remember, but I do remember that statement. And I remember even more clearly what I did with that statement. After church, I went over to Jana's house and, and I was talking about the sermon, kind of joking. And I said, I, I said to Jana, I said, so, uh, so, you, so that's what you're going to look like when you grow older? Now, her mom heard me say that, but she heard me say it differently. She, she thinks I said, oh, so you're going to look like that when you get older. That's, what she, that's how she thinks she heard me uh, speak that day. And I want to tell you, she's never let me forget uh, about the way she thinks she heard me speak those words in her house that day. Um, so what I want to do right now is uh, I want to add to what I remember from my dad's sermon. And, and I know that my mother-in-law is watching this right now, and, uh, and, and, and I just have to tell you right now, Didi, your daughter has grown up to look just like you. In fact, she's the same age today that you were when you heard that sermon all those years ago. And here's what I mean by that. The selfless love that you just so lavishly pour over everybody in your universe, she looks like you. Your never give up attitude, she looks like you. Your desire for every person in your family to know the Lord, she looks like you. The proximity of your heart to your tear duct, she looks like you. Your love for all children, she looks like you. Your fun-loving nature, she looks like you. Your undying commitment to family, she looks like you. And your willingness to bandage any wound that shows up, whether it be physical or spiritual, she looks like you. So on this Mother's Day, I, I hope all of you who are, are watching this sermon, I hope you will take some time to thank the woman who has replicated herself in you. And if she's no longer alive, I hope you'll thank God for that woman who poured herself into you. And I also hope that, 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 that all of you will ask God to guide you as you replicate yourself into the lives of those that God connects with you, whether, whether they're your biological children or, or whether they're kids old or young who, who God has connected with you. And so I say to all the mothers out there today, whether you're a biological mother or whether you're a God-appointed mom, I say thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your unconditional love. Thank you for everything that you've done to bring up the people who God has given into your care to bring them to that place where they know the Lord and they love the Lord. Thank you and happy Mother's Day. Let's pray. God, on, on this Mother's Day, I just thank you for all the moms. Whether they be biological moms or God-appointed moms, God, I thank you for all that the women who are watching this sermon have done to rear up the people that you've placed under their care. Thank you for the way they've loved and served and cared and nurtured. Thank you for the way, Lord, they've helped build faith and hope. Thank you, God, for the way they have taken what you've given them and shared it so selflessly. And I pray, God, that you would continue to move among all of us, Lord, and help us to, to take the love that you've given us and just let it be poured out over everyone that you bring before us. Thank you, God, for those opportunities to be your hands and your feet and to share your heart 
and your grace. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to thank you for being a part of this, this worship service today. I thank you for, for the time that you've given. You could be doing so many other things, and I just thank you for giving it to the Lord today. And I pray that he will make this day uh, a day of blessing, a day of joy, uh, a, a day of gratitude today as you thank those women in your life that have that have been that mother figure for you. And, and, and I also want to remind you to, to register your tenants on the link that's below the viewing window. And, and uh, if, if you have uh, not um, given of your tithes and offerings today, you can also click on a link there below this viewing window and do that as well. It's been a blessing uh, worshiping with you today. And now I pray that as you go uh, from here, I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. I pray that the Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. I pray that the Lord will lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So go in that peace and may the blessings of God go with you.